Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pad tutorial. Last video, we implemented our enemy and the bullet and the bullet now moves up, the enemy moves down. And you can see when I press play, when the bullet hits the enemy, the enemy gets destroyed, right? And if my bullet doesn't destroy my enemy and my enemy uh, touches my player, my player gets destroyed. So we know that this code here creates the bullet, right? And my bullet knows what to do by itself. So all that I have to do is to check if my player has pressed any key. If so, I create a bullet, right? And I don't want to create a bullet once I press start on the game. So I don't want to leave this code here on the game start, right? If I don't have that code, I press play and my bullet's not created. And that's how I want it to work because I just want the bullet to be created if my player press a key, right? So now let's go to the player uh, on the loop tab where we check for keys to move, right? We're going to do something very similar. So I'll say if key is pressed and now we have to choose a key to make our player shoot something or shoot the bullet. So I'll choose, for example, the space bar. So I can just press space. So if I press the space bar, then, so now I want to create my bullet, right? And to create my bullet, I just have to create an object like I do here on the game start to create the player and to create the enemy. So game enemy equals object new enemy. Okay, so to create the bullet, let's go back to the player loop. And here, I don't have to say game dot bullet because this is not the bullet uh, from my game. This is my player's bullet and we are coding already play uh, inside player already. So I don't have to say that I can just say the bullet will be equals object underscore nil and the class bullet. Right. So now if I press play and press the space bar, you can see that I can start creating bullets, but the bullets are created right in the middle of the screen rather than on my player's position. Because anything that we create inside the game, if we don't uh, specify a position for it, it's created in the middle of the screen, right? On the position 0, 0, 0, x and 0, y. So if I want my bullet to be created on the same position as my player, right after I create my bullet here, I can say that my bullet dot x position will be equals my own x position. And who am I? I'm the player because this code is inside player, right? So self dot x is the player's x position. And I have also to say here bullet dot y equals self dot y. So if I change the X and Y position of the bullet to be the same as the player's X and the player's Y. Now, when I press play, I press space bar and it creates bullets uh, on the position of my player. But you can see that if I hold the space bar, <laughs> this kind of, st of, of stuff happens because we are checking right now if we are pressing the space bar and yes I'm holding the space bar so yes I'm pressing the space bar and we don't want that actually so what we want to do is we, we don't want to check if the key is pressed we want to check if the key was pressed and just by changing that now you can see that I can hold my space bar but it will shoot just one bullet right if I want to shoot a lot of bullets, I can keep spamming the bullets, clicking on my space bar like this. And I just want to change it back here so I can show you something. So let's leave it uh, the way it was before. If I hold my space bar and keep moving, you will realize that at some point my player will start getting very slow and not just my player, but the game as a whole. See, now it's very slow already. And why is that happening? Because we are creating a lot of objects when we create the bullets. And once these bullets leave the screen, they're not being deleted. They're still calculating their position. So they keep going up and up and up. So the thing is, 
we never destroy the bullets and we just keep creating them and each of them are processing their own uh, physics, let's say, their own code. So this lags a lot our game. So you can see now that my game is very slow and you can even maybe <laughs> hear my computer. That's pretty simple to, to solve. I want to, first I will change this back to was. That's what we want. And if we just leave it like this, it's very hard uh, for us to get the game laggy like that. But if we keep playing, at some point it will get that laggy. I just changed back uh, to is to show you in a faster way what happens. Because when we, when we, we have the is here instead of was, it creates way more bullets, right? So it's faster to see the, 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 the bug happening. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to destroy the bullet once it leaves the screen. Because once it's outside of the screen, uh, on the top of the screen, we don't need it anymore, right? It's just calculating garbage and garbage because we, we're not going to use those bullets anymore. They're never going to come back, right? So once, we, uh, once the bullet leaves the screen, we want to destroy the bullet. So let's go here to the bullet code on the loop tab. And how can I do it? How can I say when uh, I leave the screen and I say I because this is the bullet, we are coding inside the bullet. So when the bullet leaves the screen, uh, delete the bullet. Well, we can keep checking for the bullet's Y position, right? So the Y position on the middle is zero. When we are going up, we are increasing the position. You can see here that the Y position keeps increasing with the speed, right? So I know that going up, it's greater than zero. So we have to check if the bullet Y position is greater than some number. And this number has to be the number that represents the top of the screen. And if the bullet's greater than that, that number, so if the bullet is on the top of the screen, outside of the screen, we destroy the bullet. So let's try that. Let's say if self dot y, so if the bullet dot y, and this self here now means the bullet because we are coding it inside the bullet, right? So if my self dot y is bigger than, okay, now we have to choose a number, and I'm not sure what number uh, represents the top of the screen, so let's try first with 200. So if my y position is greater than 200, I can destroy myself, right? So if my Y position is greater than 200, I destroy myself. That's the bullet. So now if I stop and play my game, let's see how far the bullet goes now. Oh, see that the bullet stops around here. So this would be the position 200. So we want it to go farther. So let's try now instead of 200, 300. Let's see where the bullets are destroyed. Uh, almost there. I think it can go a little bit more. So I'll try 400 now. Let's see where the bullets stop. So see now the bullet uh, leaves the screen and you cannot even see it being deleted. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, so we have the player, we have the bullet. The bullets won't lag our game because they will be uh, destroyed at some point. But you can see that when I press play, if I, lead, if I let my enemy pass by, it just goes right out of the screen. And the same thing happens to the enemy. The enemy just keep going down and down and down and down and down. And today, in today's class, we're going to uh, implement a spawner that will keep spawning a lot of enemies for us. So I also want to prevent that enemies I uh, start lagging our game. So to do that, I'll do the same thing I did with the, the bullet. I want to destroy my enemy once it leaves the screen. But now my enemy doesn't go up, right? It goes down. So instead of being greater than 400, it should be smaller than minus 400. Because 400 is on the top. So 0 is on the middle, minus 400 is on the bottom. So let's go to the enemy loop tab and I want to do the same thing, so I can say if self.y, and this self now means the enemy because we are coding inside the enemy, is smaller than minus 400, then destroy self. So again, if I press play, you cannot even see that happening. 
Let's see, maybe we can see because the enemy is a little bit bigger, but no, we cannot see that happening. But just to make sure it's working, I'll make this number a little bit bigger. So let's say minus 200, just to see if the enemy disappears around here. If it disappears around here, yeah. So see that that it happened, that the, the enemy disappeared around here. So if it is disappearing around here, if I put minus 400 here, I know that it's gonna disappear down there as well. So I know that my code is working. Great. So now we can start adding the spawner to keep spawning enemies for us randomly on the screen, right? On random positions. So to do that, I'll first need a class. So I'll create a class, uppercase, the first letter, right? And I'll call it spawner. So the class spawner, press OK. And the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, add this class to the game. So I'll go to the game start and I will create a object spawner. I can say game dot spawner equals new object spawner from the class spawner, right? If I press play now, you can see that we have now a blue square in the middle of the game and that's my spawner. The spawner will not have a sprite, so it will be uh, showing as a blue square, but I don't want that blue square to be on my game, so what can I do with that? So it doesn't really matter the position of the spawner in our game because the spawner will create a, uh, an enemy for us uh, on the top of the screen on any position on the X, on a random position on the X. So on the top of the screen, anywhere around here, right? But the spawner itself doesn't matter where it is. It can be on the middle of the screen, it can be down here, it can be outside of the screen. So if it doesn't really matter, let's move it outside of the screen so we cannot see this blue square, right? From empty image, because we're not gonna add an image to the spawner. So on the spawner start, once the spawner is created, the first thing I want him to do is self.x or let's use y or it could be x or y doesn't matter we just have to give a position so the spawner will leave the screen so let's say for example if i leave here 300 self.y equals 300 when i start my game you can see that the spawner is still on the top there but if i change it to 400 now you can see that i cannot see my spawner anymore you can see that i cannot see my spawner anymore yes <laughs> So yeah, that's what we want. We don't want to see that's that ugly spawner, but it doesn't mean that the spawner won't work. The spawner is still working. And we can see that if I go here on the loop tab and I say print, what is print? So print is gonna uh, print something for us here on the console window. So for example, I can say here print and then I have to use quotes and then I can say it's working. And as it is on the loop tab, it will keep printing for us many times. So when I press play, you can see that it keeps printing for us, even though the, the object is not on the room, right? It's not on the screen. So it is working. Nice. So we don't need this print here anymore. This print we use we usually use for this kind of stuff. We usually use it to debug. That's what we call debugging. We're testing the code. We're testing to see if it's working. And yes, it's working. It's printing, so it's working, right? So what do we want to do inside the spawner? How can the spawn create uh, many enemies for us? So here on the start tab, what we want to create is a variable for the spawner. And we're going to create a variable called timer. So the timer of my spawner, self here is the spawner, right? So the timer of my spawner will start with, let's say 60. So if you remember, when I talked about the loop tab, uh, the loop tab runs many times per second, right? But how many times exactly? Well, it runs around 60 times per second. So that means that any code that I put here will run 60 times in one second. So if I say that my self.timer will be equals my self.timer minus one, every loop my timer will be reduced in one right if my timer uh, has a 60 value so that means that it will need 60 loops to zero my timer right 
and if it needs 60 loops that means one second so if we are using uh, 60 here for the timer we're saying one second and why do we need that timer for so that timer is what is going to control uh, how long till the spawner create the next enemy so i started with 60 because i want the spawner to create an enemy after one second when i start the game so here we are saying that the timer will keep reducing and if the timer so if self dot timer reaches zero so if my timer is equals equals zero and here we use two equals instead of one equal right why do we do that so one equal means that you are assigning so i'm saying that my self dot timer is now my self dot timer plus uh, minus one and when we use two equals it's like a question you're verifying so you are asking is my self dot timer equals equals zero if so then what do i want to do i want to create an enemy so how can i create an enemy let's go back to the game start tab here and we use this code here to create an enemy right game dot enemy equals new object enemy great and we don't need this code here anymore i don't want to create an enemy once I press the start and I couldn't start now because I haven't finished my my code once we say if something we have to say then what right so I don't want my enemy to be spawned one once I press play my game so I'll remove this code from here as well but instead we are going to create the enemy inside the spawner here on the loop tab if my timer reaches zero then I want to create my enemy and again my enemy is not from the game anymore so i don't have to say game dot enemy my enemy is being created by the spawner so i can just say enemy so my enemy will be a new object from the class enemy right so you can see that now if i press play after one second my enemy is created see that one second created very nice but it doesn't keep creating my uh, other enemies why not because the timer reaches zero it creates the enemy and that's it and then the timer keeps going down right keeps going down and down so in the next one it will be minus one because it's zero now and then minus one minus one then it's not zero anymore so it doesn't create an enemy anymore so the thing is once we create an enemy what we want to do is we want to reset the timer so i can say if my timer is equal zero create a new enemy and self.timer equals 60 so reset my timer now if i press play every one second my enemy is created and it goes down and once it leaves the screen it's destroyed we cannot even see that happening that's cool but uh, you can see that my enemy is being created on the top and not in the middle even though we are not specifying any positions here for the enemy but if you remember that's because on the class enemy the enemy itself it's setting its own position y right so once the enemy is created the first thing it does is to change its position y that's why it's created on the top there but it is being created yet inside of this of the game screen and i also don't want that i because like it doesn't look good the enemy just showing up like that so instead i'll make the enemy to be spawned outside of the screen and then we can just see the enemy coming down so i'll send my enemy instead of 250 to 400 again so if i stop and play my game now you can see that my enemies start showing from the top and we cannot see them uh, being created and that looks better for me so that's what we want but now what we want to do is to uh, randomize the x position of the enemy so the y position can be the 400 uh, for all of them because i want all of them to be created outside of the screen but i cannot just say uh, for example here self.x equals let's say 200 because when I stop and play my game, they will all be created in the same position. And I don't want that. I want them to have a random position on the X. 
So the next thing we have to do is to make this X position to be random. And that's what we're going to do on the next video. So make sure to save your game always, right? And I'll see you in the next video.